I want to thank uh, Herb and Ann. Uh, you know, I have to, first of all, let me just say a couple of things about when you're building, let me use this term, it's called mutually beneficial relationships. You, it has to be mutually beneficial. Uh, a relationship can't be one-sided. It doesn't matter if you're dating, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with uh, pastors or relationships in general, they have to be mutually beneficial. Now, I have some relationships that I had to cut off because it wasn't mutual. So if you're giving too much and they're not giving back to you, then at some point you're going to be deficient. Then you're going to start writing checks and it's going to come back NSF. And so you have to understand and you're the one that has to decide who do you want in your life and who do you not want in your life. That's why it is so important that we start thinking about and discerning the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a neuter pronoun. Holy Spirit is a person. And that person is the person of Jesus Christ. And so when you know these dynamics, you know what lifts you up and what builds you up, then it's easy to say that we can disagree and still love. Nobody has kind of the market on this Bible. There's so much more that I wish I knew about the word of God. I just don't know. But can we still go get a hamburger without being angry at one another? Can we still go, you know, and still do life together? Right. And we can. You just have to do it. Right. So the relationship I have with him is awesome. It's mutually beneficial. He said a lot of things about me, but I love him being in my life. We need each other. Pastors need each other. Every man needs a mentor. Every man. That's why we're going to be doing this releasing the power of God in the hearts of men, because there is something deep down on inside of every man that needs to come out at this moment, in this hour, in this season. Thank God for the the strong women of God that's been in the church, but it's time for the men to take the churches back over. Amen, somebody. It's time for the men to be the first one to worship, the first ones to pray, the first ones to get up in the morning to get the kids dressed and ready to go, the first one to be at the house for times of consecration. Come on, somebody. It's time for the men to come in. And so this is what this is this hour. This is the season. And rather than talking about it, we just decided that we were going to be about it. Amen. And so we love them. Come on and give your pastors a great big hand of appreciation. Come on. In this day and in this hour and in this season, you're going to need the Holy Spirit because of what has been released. Um, I love the series you guys getting ready to start on. I started a series the first part of this month called The Beast the lamb and the dove because you got to understand there is a beast system that we're sitting under right now the beast is not something that's going to be released you're under a beast system right now but even though we might be under that beast system we still have a lamb without spot or wrinkle the lamb that says that no matter what we go through in life he always makes a way of escape come on somebody because Calvary makes the difference, baby. No matter what you've been through in your life, when you get to Calvary, it makes the difference in your life. When you get to the cross, the old rugged cross, some churches don't even have a cross anymore. Some churches don't even want to talk about the cross. Talk about the blood of Jesus. Talk about consecration. Talk about prayer. But my Bible hasn't changed. And if you want to do something great for God, then you got to do the same things they did in the book of Acts, which is he's going to be preaching about. So I'm going to start right there in the book of Acts. So today I, he asked me if I had any slides. I'm not doing slides for a long time to come. The Lord convicted me on slides and he convicted me. That's it. My convictions don't go to anybody else. He convicted me that in our church, we're no longer going to do slides. You're going to have to bring your Bible. So if I can't show you in the word of God, don't worry about coming and take a picture of a slide. Because I'm going to show you in the, in the word because we got to get back to bringing our Bibles to church. A lot of people keep their Bibles up on the mantle in the house. To their favorite 1 Corinthians chapter 13 scriptures. And there it sits, collecting dust. But the word only works when you work it, baby. And see, once you got to work the word, and when you work the word, the word will work you. Come on, somebody. See, for too many of us, the word is a photograph, but God said the word of God is supposed to be a mirror. See, in a photograph, you get to look at it. You get to critique it. You get to judge it. 
But when you're looking in a mirror, you're looking at yourself. <laughs> Can I get a witness in here this morning? Amen. I got a church that's going to talk back to me this morning. I like that. The more you talk back, the better I preach. So we're going to go right on in where I know he's going to really hone in uh, for his series. Let's open your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. Thank you to all of you that are watching by live stream. You are here at the right moment. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4 is where we're going to start today. And today I want to take you from tradition to revelation. I want to take you from tradition to revelation because traditions are good. Don't get me wrong. We need some traditions. But sometimes when your traditions begin to outweigh the commands of God, it moves in traditionalism. That's where it can become bad because you put your traditionalism over the commands of God. I, I never have said anything against traditions. Traditions are good. You need some traditions. Amen. You can't just throw out the baby with the bathwater. Right? So you do need some traditions, but you need a revelation. So I want to take you from tradition to revelation and and all i'm going to do today just to just say i'm don't don't worry about the titles apostle all that stuff i'm your homeboy from indian trail that's how i want you to look at me i'm your homeboy i'm not here to hurt you i'm here to encourage you i'm not here to hurt them the only reason i'm in their lives is to be an encouragement to them to build them up to be a support system for them it's not my job to tell them what to do there's no other bishop or apostle's job my job is to undergird them my job is to protect them, and sometimes I have to protect them from you. Trust me, I'll do that too. I ain't scared of none of y'all. Because my job is to cover them and to protect them. I know what they're going through. We've been here where you are. We built our church from scratch with just three members to where it is today. So I know what God can do if you just put your trust in somebody. They're not perfect people. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to make you mad. But there ain't no reason for you to storm out of the church. I don't like, I don't like the music today. I don't like, I don't, I hate the colors of the wall. Woo, did you see what they had on? People leave churches because of so many just oh stupid reasons. Let me just can I say that word? You know, sometimes you know, just just dumb reason. We had somebody leave our church because they ain't like the other person holding their hand when we were praying. What kind of madness is this? I didn't like the way she held my hand. It's foolishness, saints. And that's what's hurting God's house. I'm not going to even say churches. It's hurting God's house. Because some of these places that had churches on there is not God's house. Okay. Y'all ready for this? You sure? All right. Let's go right into this thing. Because this is a powerful, powerful group of scriptures that I, I want you to see here. The Bible said, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Penta, Penta is 50. Pentecost is 50. Uh, let me just take you back a second to uh, chapter 1. Uh, Jesus showed himself after the resurrection, proving many infallible things for 40 days. The Bible says that. Go back to chapter 1. And so he said, wait here, though, because something is coming. Did you hear me? Jesus says something is coming. You got to wait for something that's coming. Jesus knew they needed something for what the persecution was going to require after he resurrected on up. I mean, after he ascended, not resurrected, after he ascended up to be next to his father. You got me here. So he taught for 40 days, then he got on up out of here. And he told him to wait for something. It took 10 days, 10 days. The reason I say 10, because 10 and 40 is what? 50, Penta, 50, Pentecost. So we know it was 50 days. Hello, somebody. For them to wait for. Now, if you really want me to dig deeper in the book of Exodus, we learned this after they came out of Egypt, the children of Israel, and they came out by the blood through the water under the cloud of the anointing and full of the lamb. Because if you're going to get delivered from Egypt, the world, you got to come out by the blood through the water of baptism under the cloud of the anointing and full of the lamb of God. The same way they got delivered in the Old Testament is the same way we get delivered in the New. Now we have the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. It doesn't just roll it back for another year. Jesus said, I come to eradicate it because I put my blood on the mercy seat. My God. And he said, no to mercy. And he held mercy back. He said, I got you. 
My God, somebody know what I'm talking about today. It came out 50 days later. That's when Mount Sinai lit up. 50. That's when the power of God ascended on that mountain. Come on, somebody. At the same time, God said, I don't want to just use Moses as my mouthpiece. God said, now I want to talk to all of the people. Yeah. See, there's, there's, a, there's a lesson here, saying. So Moses got the people together. God said, they can't just come up. They can't just roll up on me. Let them know there are some stipulations. Yeah. Amen. You just can't roll up on a holy and a mighty God. You just can't walk up on God. He's going he gonna to knock you out. God don't want no casual relationships. He said, either you love me or you don't. So you just can't walk up on God. He said, listen, consecrate the people. Let them know. Don't get too close to the mountain. Because I'm on this mountain. If they touch it, they will surely die. So he laid everything out. They got consecrated. They were there waiting on God. And God hit that mountain. The Bible said there was a long trumpet blast. And the mountain started. Have, how many of y'all been to the mountain? North Carolina mountains, Rocky Mountains, all, any kind. Blue Ridge. Imagine that whole mountain shaking when you on it. The whole mountain shook. And the people of God ran from the presence of God. God said, y'all, come on. I want you. They said, uh-uh. I don't want no parts of that, Lord. That don't sound right. It ain't quiet enough. It don't fit my box. Lord, that's not how I thought you were going to talk to me, Lord. I didn't know you were that loud, Lord. I didn't know you was going to make the mountains shake like that, Lord. It, it don't fit the parameters of my human reasoning, Lord. And historians say they turned around and ran back to the camp five miles because they didn't want God for themselves. And they said, Moses, you talk to God for us. That's what the church does today. Amen. Pastor, hold on. I don't want to consecrate, but I got to consecrate for. I don't want to read the Bible. What are you talking? That's what you do. Lay out before the Lord. Are you crazy? I'm not laying prostrate before the Lord. That's what you do. You the pastor. Wait a minute. You go get the word for us, and we'll just test that word when we hear it. That's what churches do today. Well, pastor, I don't like that part of that word. So, so I'll take that first part, but not the second part. Rather than when you read the word for yourself and let God judge you first. So that when you come in the house of the Lord, you're already prepared for the word that they give because you've already been in the word, the word that God, that God gave. you. See, too many times you always come in and get a word from the pastor when you should already have a word from the pastor. As a matter of fact, you only should come in here to get confirmation from the words you already been in. So why are you coming trying to see it? I'm trying to see what word pastor going to give me. No, you need to come up in here and see, I know I've been in the word today. I know he's going to confirm some things. There's some prayers that I've been praying. There's some stuff I have been expecting. And when I come up in the house of God today, I know because he's been in the word. I've been in the word. My spirit. Uh, connect with his spirit. His spirit connects with God's spirit. So I know he's going to talk to me. So when you get in this right here, God will get into you. Is this making sense at all? All right, it was on the day. I just wanted to share that about Pentecost. Isn't that amazing? That's all. But let's get back into this book. Y'all want some more? They want Pentecost. It had fully come. And they were all with one accord in one place. Saints is unity. Is the thing that we have to have in the house of God. Amen. Unity now, you got to understand something. When you start talking about unity or oneness, that means sometimes you got to put up with people. They might not, they're different. People are different. But they're just people. Isn't it amazing how, because I got saved late. I say I got saved late because I didn't get saved early in my life. I live my life. I live my life. I live my life. Too much so. Amen. So I got saved later on in life. And so I can't even say that I came up through a particular denomination because once we got saved, I, I was married when I got saved. And then we actually joined a non-denominational church. But I didn't even care about denominations. I cared about the word. I wanted to know what the word says. Right. And so once I read the word, the word began to teach me how important it was 
for us to connect. See, one of the things I've learned that people who come to churches and they leave real fast is those are people who don't connect. Now, now, there's a caveat to that. You can't connect with everybody. Sometimes the people who left should have. Can, can, I, can I go on up in there? Let, 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 me, let me go on up in there. And some people who left our church, I ain't go after them. Because the Lord said not to. And I know tradition says, Pastor, you know the word your God says. That Jesus left the 99 and went after the one. It says that, Pastor. And I will agree with you. The word does say that. But first of all, I'm not Jesus. Amen. That's the first point. I'm not Jesus. Amen. Second point, he left the 99 for the one that was lost. Amen. Not the one that left. Amen. Now, if you lost, I'm coming after you. Amen. But if you just left, you made a choice. Yeah. Come on, somebody. And how you going to come against somebody else's choice? Is this good? Okay, so it's good for us to have that unity. And listen, let me they're not here right now, so let me just talk with the family. They're not in here, so let me just talk with the family. Don't let nobody put their mouth on your pastor. Amen. You defend them. You say, no, not in my house. No, we don't do this in my house. See, this is the spirit of Antichrist. Anything anti to Christ, that's the spirit of Antichrist. So that's what they're walking in is the spirit of Antichrist when they come against Christ. Amen. Because Christ put them here, yes. established this ministry. Yes. So you are the ones to defend their honor. Amen. And if you don't defend their honor, you're operating in the same spirit. Amen. And then you try to wonder why you're not getting anything from the man of God. You close Amen. your spirit off from the word of God. Amen. Okay, I'm going to let them back in. Y'all good, though? You good? You got that part? Okay, I'm going to let them back in. So they back with us now, so just keep it's a secret. Don't, don't tell them what we talked about, okay? In one accord, one accord in one place, and listen to this, and suddenly, somebody say suddenly. suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. suddenly. Now suddenly means it happened really, really fast. Yeah. Suddenly means that it, it didn't take a long time for this to happen. When you're in the right place at the right time, doing the right things with the right people, you can get a suddenly. They were in one accord at the right time. It was the day of Pentecost, the right season. Pente, Pentecost, there were seven feasts that uh, the children of Israel walked in. The Pentecost, the season of Pentecost was one of those seasons. The three main seasons is the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Tabernacles was during the time when Jesus was born, which right around September, October time frame. It happened during the Feast of Tabernacles. And so this was a suddenly, somebody say suddenly. So it happened very quickly. There came a sound. Somebody say a sound. See, let me tell you something. Say sometimes, man, when God comes upon you, there's a sound that is released. There's a sound of worship. It's a sound of praise. It's a sound that sometimes you can't even it can't even be uttered. It sometimes you just have a moan and a groan. Mm, Lord Jesus, that was good to me. Sometimes your pastor is preaching, and sometimes it hits you. You go, oh, you don't even know what to say. You just know that that was the Lord. You got a quickening on it, right? You went. Oh, oh, I don't know how to say, I don't even know what to say, Pastor. That was a good eating right there, right? Anybody anybody ever hit got hit with the word like that today? Oh, so you go, oh man, you got those groaners that happened suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Notice when they got filled with this spirit, they weren't standing up or falling out in the floor. They were sitting down. Amen. Just like you sitting right now. See, one thing I know about the spirit of the Lord, it'll hit you wherever you are. Yes. You don't have to get in some traditional spot. You don't have to get up on the morning's bench and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You foaming at the mouth. You don't have to do none of that. God said, I'll find you wherever you are. He said, if you want me, how much of me do you want? Are you, are you hearing what me say? So today I came on an assignment because I know God wants to fill you with more of him because he's unlimited. Say it with me. Unlimited. Come on. So we're going to we're going to just take the guardrails off of God. And we're going to let him fill us up today. Amen. Including me, because I, I like what Apostle Paul says, always being filled with the spirit. That, that, that's how you translate it in the Greek. He was he said, I, you should always want to be filled. I want to be filled every day. I ask him every day, Lord, re 
refill me, refresh me, renew me, Lord. Come on, somebody, because you're walking in this world, and sometimes you'll, you can get tainted by this world and the stuff you have to go through, the news that you see, the people that you work with, the people that you work with, the people that you work with, the people that you work with. Jesus, you, you, you had to sometimes go to the bathroom and say, Lord, you better consecrate me because I'm about to go off on these folks up in here. Y'all know what I'm saying? I get that too. I work too. Amen. I, I have a job just like you, so I understand. I don't go up in there as a pastor. I'm John. And sometimes you have to say, Lord, consecrate my hands because I'm about to lay hands up in here. Y'all still love me? They were sitting down. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire. Somebody said tongues, tongues of fire. And, and, it, and it sat on each one of them. So each one of them experienced this in a different way. Each one of them experienced this in a different way. Just because a person sits and worships and weeping, it's no different than a person that's standing with their arms up and weeping. See, the, the, the way another person's worshiping ain't none of your business. A person might want to sit down and then get consecrated, get quiet. Their worship is no less than your worship that you, you're verbose. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And so people worship the way you worship. Listen, don't try to worship like other people. Amen. Don't try to pray like other people. Amen. Don't try to be like other people. Amen. You are unique. Let me tell you what God says about you. Let me just put this to the side for a second. Let me tell you what God says about you. He says you are a masterpiece. Amen. You know what that means? That means you are a designer's original. God said, I put my thumbprint on you and there's nobody like you. Amen. He made you precious and unique like you are because he needed one of you. Amen. And guess what? Then he broke the mold. He said, I can't make another one because she's too precious. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's how you got to feel, right? Because I know I'm God's favorite. So y'all should have said, no, you ain't. Man, I'm, I'm his favorite. I know I'm his favorite. Come on. Come on, say it. Say, I know I'm his favorite. Come on. No, you're not. There you go. Anytime you hear that, no, I'm God's favorite. No, you're not either. I'm God's favorite. So, so let me say it again. I am God's favorite. That's what I'm talking about. See? See? So no, no, bro. Uh -uh, you got that wrong. I'm God's favorite. Amen? And since God is no respecter of person, why would he give me something that I can operate in that you can't? The anointing is pure. It's not tainted. And the anointing flows from the top down. Amen. Amen. It's called the way the Lord set this thing up with his fivefold ministry. And so each one of them had something. They had an experience for themselves. Verse four says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. Because the spirit can give you an utterance. I want to focus in on that today a little bit later about that utterance. What does it sound like? What is it? Right. Because some people think it's just one thing, but actually several things. It's several things according to the scriptures. Right. Some people think it's just using your prayer language, but it's that but more. It's that but more. So let me ask this question. How many of you have prayed in a different utterance rather than your English? Prayed in a different utterance. OK. In a different utterance. OK. All right. How many of you would like that? You would like to experience that. OK. Gotcha. Don't be scared because it's God. Okay. All right, good. So you ain't got to worry about it. It's God. So, so I'm going to get into this today because once I show you truth, then you can receive it. I said once I show you truth, then you can receive it. Amen? And so people who usually have difficulty receiving the gift is because their minds are so full of spiritual sounding things that you block your mind off from receiving all of what God has for you. Some of it is because churches have preached against it. That's why I say traditionalism can keep you from your inheritance, right? I came here to open you up. I came here to drop a gift in this house. See, I'm not just leaving to be leaving. I'm dropping something in this house. I'm dropping a gift in this house. Are you, are you here? Apostle Paul said, I came up in here to stir things up when he talked with his son, Timothy. So I'm like a Paul to my Timothy. I came in here to stir you up. You are the gifts. I said, you are the gifts. See, something you got to understand. These two right here are gifts given to this house. You can't treat God's gifts any kind of way. Right? Because once you put your mouth on God's gift, God is going to put his mouth on you. Amen. And so since they are the gifts, I came to stir them up and to stir you up. 
I came to drop something in your spirit today to know you will know there is more to God than what I'm experiencing today. And I got to a place to where I said, God, I need more of you. I'm sick and tired of being where I am right now. I don't want to be a normal Christian. I don't know what that is any longer. I want to go far beyond I've ever gone in my life before. There's more to you, God. There's more to you, and I need it, God. I need you right now, Father. See, when your hearts cry like that, you know you need something more from God. There's a spirit of holiness that comes upon you, and you will experience things on a level that you never thought you could. You think this is for the faithful few? How dare you? How dare you? And I'm going to show you in the word of God. It's not for the faithful few. It's for everybody. Let me tell you something, saints. You got to get the mentality that the devil hates me in the field, in this mutual. The devil hates me in the field, in this mutual. I hate him too. See, you got to have that kind of mentality. When things begin to hit your life, yeah, he hates me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, he hates me. And the feeling is mutual. Listen, when you start teaching on stuff like this, the devil starts coming up, putting little stuff in your head. Don't believe that. Uh-huh. No, no, that, that, that ain't for you. No, you ain't got to do all that. <laughs> yeah, that's his job, right? He, he's a deceiver. He's the master at it. And guess what? He's deceived the church to believe that you can't operate in this kind of power. See, we got to stop singing about the power, praying about the power, and asking for the power, and then we ain't going to walk in it. If you ain't going to walk in it, stop praying about it. Because, listen, you could pray all day long about power, but until you make a choice to step into it, it's not going to be realized in your life. Amen, somebody. And so why should the leaders and the bishops and the apostles walk in all the power? This is not how God set this thing up. We, as a matter of fact, we're supposed to be examples of it. And God is the one who gives it to you. Because when everybody's operating in this power, that makes a stronger church. Not just the leaders, not the praise team and the sing. No, everybody should be operating in this kind of power. This is the way Jesus Christ set it up. Is this all right? All right. Y'all want a little bit more? Okay. So the first thing I want you to understand here is say the word power. No, no, you ain't ready yet. So we're going to go to the scriptures. Go to Romans chapter eight. I'm going to come back to that. Go to Romans chapter 8. You got to have your Bibles to see this because I'm, I'm teaching on truth today. Because I got to show you in the word of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Somebody say power. power. Okay, we're going to come back. You're not ready yet. Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses, right? Or some translations say uh, in infirmities or iniquities. Right. Our weaknesses. I like that. Translate our weaknesses because it it's, it's said. See, uh, one thing I, I, I want to be transparent about is I don't always feel strong. I'm just like you. I don't always feel like praying. Are oh, you here with me saying I don't always feel like worshiping? And that's a reality because my flesh is weak. My spirit is always willing to worship, but my flesh is right. And see, sometimes we want to talk so much about the spirit, we forget about we live in this flesh body, which Paul said in this flesh, there is no good thing. Paul actually said, you know, when I want to do good, evil is present with me. You know, the things that I should not do, I do. And the things that I do, I should not do. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ. Because Calvary makes a difference. Amen. Amen. And so it goes on to say, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Did you see that? See, sometimes we don't know what to pray for. There's a solution. Let's keep reading. But the spirit himself capitalized spirit himself, because this is a this is a this is proper. (laughs) The spirit himself himself. He's a he. The spirit is a he. Right. The spirit is not an active force like electricity, like the Jehovah's Witnesses want to make you think. They don't believe that the Holy Spirit is something that you can connect with. They believe that it's like electricity. One thing I know about electricity, you better respect it. The Holy Spirit, you better respect it even more. Amen. But at least the Holy Spirit wants to get to know you because he wants to be in you and walk through you. Amen. See, the problem that God has with us is not getting the spirit to us. It's getting it through us. Oh, some of us are sacred cows in the church. We're just so full of the spirit, but we won't give it out to anybody else. Oh, can I talk raw? Can I get just get raw? 
Okay, we just get in the church and we fat and happy with the word of God, but we're not giving it to anybody else. Oh, I got a good word today, Pastor, but who are you giving it to? Who are you preaching to other than yourself? Amen. Because you get the word not for you. The word is for somebody else. All right. You grow from the word, but the word you're growing from, you should be giving it to somebody else. Right. You don't need a platform like this to give the word. It's just somebody you talk to one on one on the telephone. Do you know the Lord? You need to get to know him. That's why you got all these problems in your life. Right. Yeah. 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 Do you know? Do, are you are you playing games with God? Stop playing God games. Get your life right. But listen. But you also have to be honest with people because just because you come on this side of Christ don't mean problems are going to stop. In all actuality, your problem is going to pick up. Your problem is going to pick up. Right? Why? Because now you have just defied Satan and said, I double dog dare you to mess with me now. He said, okay. Okay, I got you. You want to be over there with Jesus? Let me just see. I tempted him too, but you failed. Because, see, the devil's one thing got to understand about Satan. He is defeated, but he still has a mouth. He still has a mouth. He's defeated, though. But he still talks to us. He's defeated. You hear me, saints? The devil is defeated. Jesus triumphed over him openly and made a spectacle of him. Amen. At Calvary. He's defeated. But he still has a mouth. He knows he has no power except the power we give him. Notice he started as a serpent in Genesis and there was a dragon in the book of Revelation. That rascal is growing. Somebody feeding that joker. Who's feeding? Stop feeding that joker. Stop acting hateful and mean. That's how you feed him. You feed him in disobedience. Come on, that's how you feed him. And he gets bigger. Just keep disobeying God. Keep doing your own thing. Keep living this cultural life. And the serpent gets bigger. Once we stop feeding him, he'll stop growing. Amen. Amen. Is that all right? Yeah. Can I give you some more of this great book? He said, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us through groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Bible is teaching us sometimes the spirit can, can pray what you can't. So when I talk about being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking an unknown language, that's this right here. But you don't have to. That's why it's nothing to be afraid of. It don't make you less than. I know some people that's, that's, that's more Pentecostal. That's what he said, more Pentecostal. They tend to make you want to feel bad just because you're not. That's not Bible. That's not Bible. It's up to you. Let me tell you something. God won't put nothing on you that you ain't ready for. If you ain't ready for this, you ain't going to get it. You got. That's why I asked who wanted it. Because only the people who want it, I'm going to pray a different prayer. Because I have preached this for over 12 years. Not one person that I have ever laid hands on to be filled with the spirit with an evidence of a beautiful language did not get it. Not one. Why? Because it's the Bible. Not because I'm preaching it or a title or who I am. But I believe the word of God and it's by faith. It was by faith that you got saved. It is by faith that you operate on a different dimension of God. That's all this is. You have the spirit, but what level do you have? How much more of God do you want in your life? The psalm said, I got to decrease the increase. What do you need to decrease the increase with? He's not going to come in and try to fill a full vessel. There's some things you got to empty out of. And when you come in empty before God, God says, I'll fill your tank for you. I'll make you overflow. Glory to God. That's what I want to leave in this house, that there should be an overflow in this place. People should be stepping on their brakes out there. Arr, I feel something. I don't even know what it is. Maybe I go over there, over there to that place over there that say exhort. Maybe they got some answers for me, and they're coming through the door. Why? Because the Spirit of God begins to build up in this place, and it moves outside the door and touch the whole community, and not one person said anything to anybody else. It was nothing but the Spirit of God. See, when that fire goes out like that, saints of God, you can't stop people from coming in. You can't stop them. Amen. I'm sorry for shouting, but y'all forgive me. Okay. It, it, I, I'm loud, but that don't make me anointed. Amen. I'm just loud. <laughs> it don't make me more anointed. I'm just loud. I'm sorry. I'm just, Jesus, I'm sorry for blowing y'all hair back. 
I was I'm surprised this sister right here wheels had started going back. Like that. <laughs> you got your brakes on, girl. You better put them brakes on. <laughs> you start rolling back on some toes in just a second. Amen. <laughs> this passage speaks of a twofold shortfall. It says we do not always know what to pray for. And even when we do know, we do not always understand how to pray for it. Amen. That's why the spirit is so important. You see what I'm saying? That's why we need it. That's what I'm saying, saints. If you, if you don't have it on that level, you need it on that level. This is why. We're fighting a spiritual war. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are not something out there in the, the ultraverse. Strongholds are right here. It's the strongholds of the mind casting down imaginations, things that we think on all the time. It's in sense we need to stop praying against principalities and start praying against your brain, your mind that's got you confused and you torn between two. I got one foot in the church, but I still want to act like the world. Uh huh. Those days are over. God says you either in or you out. Amen. Can I give you a little bit more of this book? Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. So I want your attention on this. Look at Acts 1 and 8, because that's I love he had that up here. So let's go to Acts 1 and, 1 and 8. We're going to go through this Bible a little bit. Acts 1 and 8. Turn left. Acts 1 and 8. Somebody say power. power. Okay, you ain't ready yet. Acts 1 and 8. Acts 1 and 8. So no, no, no. I'm going to go at four because there's some stuff in there that the Holy Spirit just wanted me to share with you. Okay, Acts 1 and 4. So the book of Acts is the Acts of the Apostles. It's everything they did, what they experienced, and the things that they taught. The book of Acts was written by Dr. Luke. Dr. Luke was Paul's physician. Uh, when you read the Gospel of Luke, you would notice that the Gospel of Luke contains some little details that's a little bit different than the other three Gospels because as a physician, they, they, they always... Uh, captured uh copious notes and he they were he was very meticulous about some of the things so i love the fact that the four gospels are a little bit different because they all saw jesus from their vantage point case in point let me just give them just lay this out so if i'm at a four-way stop sign right there's a person there there's a person there there's a person there and i'm here but we all see the same accident but when you read the police report it might be slightly different because i'm going to give you what i saw from my vantage point so I might see something on this side that the person over there didn't see. The person to the side might see something that I didn't see or that person didn't see. So when the, when the report comes together, we all saw the same accident, but it was written up differently. Amen. See, that's the four Gospels. So when the skeptics say, well, they, he saw this and they didn't see. He said it was two blind men, but he said it was one blind man. But they both got healed, so who cares? <laughs> amen so i'm glad that they didn't get together to conspire to put the gospels together so in actuality it actually proves the authenticity of the gospel is that all right so i'm gonna give you that one free okay that one was free so the formal account i made oh the op no i'm gonna go to four because there's too much there i might get caught up i and verse four and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father somebody say the promise of the father so, so, so the promise, when you hear the word promise, what do you think about? It's, it's, it's something that, that you can get, right? It's something that's, it's a guarantee, right? It's a promise. I promise you. I, when a person say, I promise, well, they don't mean much today. But when a person says, <laughs> no, so when a person say, I promise, you know, before it meant you can bank on it, right? So it was, it was almost as if you extended your right hand. Because back in the day, if you extend your right hand, you can bank on it, brother. Whatever we just negotiated, you ain't got to worry about me paying you back because I'm going to pay you back. Why? Because I extended my right hand. The right hand is the hand of power. That's why Jesus is at what? The right hand of the Father. Because that's the level of authority right there. So uh, by my authority, by your authority, I refuse to break our covenant. Right? But today... But when God says, I got a promise for you, yes. Yes. saints, you can bank on it. Yes. Yes. You don't have to conjure anything up. Yes. You don't have to pray. Yes. You just have to believe. Yes. It's a promise. Somebody, it's, somebody say it. It's a promise. Yes. 
God in essence is saying, I promise I got something for you. And Jesus comes in and confirms it. He said, it is the promise of the Father that I want to talk to you about now. See, you just saw me what it would be like. What, the, what would the competency level of a man be like without sin in his life? Made in the homage of day of God. That was Jesus. So the first man, Adam, failed because he was supposed to operate in that kind of authority. So I'm not talking about post-fall. I'm talking about pre-fall, pre-fall, before the fall. What was man like before the fall? What could that man do? How could he walk? What did he experience? Well, the Bible said he named all the animals and did not once repeat himself. So in other words, there must have been something about his brain that was released when he was in the presence of God. That was a powerful thing. See, that's the competency le the level of a man without sin in his life, made in the, the Latin word, imagio day, the, the very image of God. That means you look like God, act like God, talk like God. You want to see God look at me? Why? Because he fill you with all of him. So if I say, well, is God black? Is he white? Well, in me, he's black. In her, he's less black. But that's what he looks like. Why? Because I'm full of God. You want to know what he looks like? Look at me. Hello, somebody. Who cares if he's black or white? I don't care. I just know that joke could save me from sin, yeah. death, hell, and the grave. Yeah. <laughs> Deliver me from drugs, alcohol, yeah. sex, all of that stuff, man. Yeah. Clean me up. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's God. He can do that. And I thank God he didn't give up on me. Amen. Yeah. And so, so when, when we start looking at all of this, he said, listen, uh, there's a promise which he said, you have heard from me, because Jesus talked about it. Look at verse 5. But John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what I like right there. Yeah. Uh, see, let me tell you my story. See, she got baptized first, so I was mad. Because I heard her in the, in the room praying, and she was using this language. I said, I had to go to God. I said, we, we got to talk. I said, I'm the priest of this house. Why don't you give to her first, man? I'm supposed to do that first. I'm the priest. And how you going to fill her with a beautiful language? I ain't never experienced it before. I said, so what's going on, God? He didn't answer me. You know how God does. When you ain't right in your spirit, he ain't ready to answer you yet because you wouldn't have received it. So time went on. I was, I was in prayer. This, this is how God does. I was in prayer. And God says, you need to repent. I'm like, what I got to repent of? What I do? I'm going through the list. What, did I do that? No, I didn't do that. Did I do? No, I didn't do that either. Because, you know, you go through your list. And he said, you need to repent for being jealous of your wife. How dare you? <laughs> jealous of my wife? I ain't got nothing to be jealous about. He said, you was, you was fussing about her being filled and you're not. I said, yeah, Lord, you're right. You're right. You got me. I said, well, I repent of it, Lord, whenever that happens. He said, you never asked me. He said, John, you never asked me to be filled. I said, yeah, you're right. I said, well, Lord, can you show me something in the Bible? He said, yes. So turn to Luke chapter 11. Turn to Luke chapter 11. Because if I see it in the word, I got it. But I got to see it first. I don't know about you guys. I, I, I got to see it in the word. Luke 11, 11. Is this making sense at all? Are you blessed by this so far? Okay, let me give you some more of this word. Let me give you Luke 11, 11. And so I had to ask the question, Lord, I mean, how do I ask for this? Right? Because it's like you don't have a whole lot of teaching on this anywhere. Right? So I like to teach on it because I lived it. I wanted to experience God on another level. I had the spirit, but I had a lower dimension of it, right? I wanted to get to a place where I could experience God and my flesh had no control. But I thought I wanted that. See, because for me, it was about losing control. And I didn't want to lose <laughs> control. Yeah, because I like controlling what I do, what I say, when I say it. I, I, I thought I had to lose my control of things 
if this happened because I didn't want to look dumb in front of people. Oh, bless the Lord. And see, and I ain't want to lose control. But what I didn't understand is God said, I won't do anything in your life until you are ready for it. Amen. You got to surrender to it, regardless yes. if you lose control or not. Because he said, if you want control, I'll let you have it. Yes. He said, but I ain't competing with you. God don't want to compete with you. If you want control, he'll let you keep it until you go see him. He will. But there's more. Somebody say there's more. There's more for you to experience. Look at uh, Luke 11, 11. If a son asks for bread from, a, from any father, look at that. He said any father. He didn't say a, a baptized in the spirit father. He didn't say a saved father, Jewish father, Gentile father. He said any father because any father that's a true father is going to give good things to their children. Amen. He, he, he used this analogy, any. I mean, to make it just such a sweet thing, because he said, if any father, you go and ask any father for this, he said, he's going to give you some good stuff. He said, he, will he give him a stone if he asks for bread? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Verse 12. Or if he asks for an egg, will he give offer him a scorpion? If you then, been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your heavenly father give you the Holy Ghost to those who ask him? Amen. That's all I needed. Amen. I said, there it is, God. Wrap it up. I want it. All I got to do is ask. 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 And what? Uh-huh. 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 Seek. Knock. Did he say ask a certain way? Did he say seek a certain way? Did he say knock a certain way? He said, if you just ask, seek, and knock, he said, it's yours. Why? Because it's a promise. Are you seeing this, saints? It's pretty simplistic. Man has tried to screw this thing up, but it's very simplistic. If you want it, he said, I'll let you have it. That's why I asked, who wanted it? Because if you want it, you're going to get it. You're going to get it on another dimension. Another dimension of what you already have. You already have the spirit. But the question is, what level? Now, if you're happy with the level you want, Trust me, I'll leave you right there. Because you ain't ready for another level yet. And if you ain't ready for another level, I'm going to leave you alone. But they want to build a house. Not a den of thieves. Uh huh. He said, my house will be a house of prayer. So he had to kick over the money changer. He had to release the dove. See, too many churches got the dub on lockdown. They don't even teach this kind of stuff because they want to lock the dub up so that they can control the flow. Ah, uh, now, wait a minute, singers. You can't sing that much now. You know, something's happening in here and I can't control the people. They're worshiping too much. Pastors are shutting things down. I've been there. They shut it down. Shut it down. No more singing. Turn the mics off. I'm getting out of control. I might lose my people. Well, first of all, they're not yours. Did you see that? Let me give you this promise one more time because you got to get it in your heart. 13, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, we are evil people. And we know how to give good gifts to our children. He said, how much more? How much more? Will our Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit if? Are you seeing this, saints? It's not rocket science. See, I didn't come in here to give you a new revelation. I just came here to tell you what's already in the Bible. I don't know any new revelation. I'm not that smart. But when I see it in the word, it's mine. Amen? So, so when I got saved, though, let me, let me put it this way. When I got saved, because I like to use my life as an example. When I got saved, I didn't ask to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I didn't ask for the Spirit. I didn't ask to be filled. When I got saved, I wanted to be saved. Amen. I'm like, Lord, you're going to have to save my ball headed behind because I'm about to go crazy up in here. Amen. And so when I asked for him to save me, what did he do? He saved me. Why? Because I. Uh -huh. Why would he hold back on this part of the word? Why would he do that? If he says I'm no respecter of person. 
and says he loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. So much so that Jesus said, listen, there's a promise. He had to remind the disciples about the promise. He said, it's expedient for me to go because if I don't go, I can't send the promise. Right? So I'm going to be with my father at his right hand, and then I'm going to make intercession for you. All you have to do on earth is ask. I want that to sink in. There's no magic in my hand. So when I lay hands on you, we just laying hands and we're bringing our faith together. And if you believe the word, you'll be instantly baptized in the Holy Spirit on another dimension. Why I know this? I've been doing this for many years. This is why I know it works. People from my church, they know it works. Amen. Right, Tika? Right? Come on. Y'all, they know, they know it works. Why? It's, it's, I'm not magical. But the Bible did say miracle signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Amen. Follow them that follow them that believe. If you don't believe on that level, don't worry about it. You ain't gonna see it. If, if you don't believe that miracle signs and wonders can flow through them, don't worry about it. You ain't going to see it. Yeah. See, because your expectation is what you're going to get. Right. What you expect, you get. If you don't expect anything, you're not going to get anything. Yeah. If you come to church without an expectation, don't worry about it. You're going to get exactly what you expect. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Ain't nothing going to happen today. And guess what? Ain't nothing going to happen. <laughs> well, he should have preached a different word. That should have sung a different song. No, your attitude was wrong. You should have came in with a different attitude. You should have came up in here that God is going to say something to my spirit and make my shadow not leak. He's going to say something. Something got to touch me right here. Something that's palpable. Something I can grab a hold of. Again, I'm sorry for shouting. You guys been in Matthew 6, 33. You've been all up in there, right? Seek first what? Y'all been in there, right? That's what you guys been teaching. Seek work first what? Seek first what? Come on, talk to him and seek first what? Amen. See, the kingdom is the king's domain. Amen. And in the king's domain, the promise is already there. Amen. So if you're seeking the kingdom and the kingdom of God is here, what are you waiting on? Everything in the king's domain is yours. Jesus died so that the will would be active. We have wheels. Hopefully, you better have a wheel. Well, actually, you need a trust because wheels are not even, we learned that, that wheels really don't have a whole lot of power. You need to have a trust, right? So that trust, though, is dead until the people who put that thing in place die. When that person dies, the trust becomes active. Jesus wrote a wheel because Jesus is the wheel. He's the logos and the rhema. Jesus wrote the wheel. And when I die at Calvary, the wheel became active. So now you come up in the church so that you can receive what's in the wheel for you. Uh huh. What a travesty it is that the lawyer can read the will, but you don't want what he reads. Well, well, I heard what they got, and but they got the same thing. Well, look at them. Yeah, they asked for it. Too many people walk away. Without listening to the wheel. And when you walk away without listening to the wheel, you got stuff that you don't even know you got. That's that's how I see the church today. My God, it, it makes me, I, my heart goes out because I'm like, they got so much in the wheel that they're not walking in. And Jesus called it a promise. Is this making sense? Okay, it's not rocket science. I'm telling you, it's not rocket science. This, this is it right here. So now y'all ready to go back to Acts 1-8? I was supposed to be reading that. <laughs> Holy Ghost took over, took me somewhere else. In the book of Malachi, then, then, then God said, I change not. 
So if God is not going to change, then who need to do the changing? I said, who, do, who, who need to do the changing? We do. Okay, so sometimes you got to change the way you think in order to receive what God has for you. Acts 1 and 8. So I was supposed to be getting there. So I stopped over there in 5, verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He wasn't even talking about Israel. He was talking about his kingdom. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put it in his own authority, but you shall receive power. Somebody say power. power. And he said, you shall receive power. Somebody say power. power. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Now, that word witnesses doesn't mean you're going to have power to go witness. The Greek understanding of this word witnesses is the word mortos, where we get the English word martyr. He said, I'm going to give you power to die. He said, because you're too busy trying to live. Oh, 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 oh. y'all want to go back to singing now, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he said, I want to empower you with enough of my spirit to kill you. Now, when I say to kill you, I'm talking about your flesh. Yeah. He said, I want you to operate on a different level of the spirit. He said, but your flesh has to die. He said, so I'm going to give you some power to die. Oh, but how many of y'all ever heard that? Tell like that. Lord, I want more of your spirit. He said, yeah, I want you to die. Right? Don't you realize that that's what Jesus did? You remember when Jesus was teaching about the seed dying in the ground? And he said, unless the seed dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it grows into more fruit. Y'all remember that parable? You know who Jesus was talking about? Himself. He was talking about himself. Because the seed came down from heaven to die. Alone. Even the father had to turn his back on him. And when the father turned his back on him, the son refused to shine. He said, if you turn your back, I'm turning my back too. The mountains began to quake. And he said, I'm the seed that's been implanted so that I can bring forth much fruit. Amen. And so unless you're willing to die like Jesus, you're not willing to operate like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Is, that, is that good stuff? Yeah. He said, but you shall receive power. Somebody say power. power. See, see, this is the power. This kind of power is not to jerk and shake and all the other stuff. Th this is supernatural power where when you're in your prayer life, you get an unction in your spirit that you know what you just prayed. God said, I got it. And guess what? You can leave it right there. You don't have to pick it up anymore because you get a confirmation in your spirit. It is done. That's the kind of power I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of power that when you're talking to someone at Walmart, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you begin to prophesy to their lives right there. That's the kind of power I'm talking about. That, that's, what you, that's what you walk in. But to what dimension? Right? Because that's what people need. They need us. People need us, saints. Why are we holding back on people? Because we're nervous. Oh, I ain't never done that before. Well, do it. I'm, so, I'm just so scared. But he didn't give us the spirit of fear. But of power, there's that word again. It's the Greek word dunamis. Well, we get the English word dynamite. He wants you to be explosive. Yeah, I get nervous too when he tells me to go talk to strangers and go give him a word. I talk my way out of it until I can't. So I'm just like you. I don't just, he drops something in my spirit and I go, I go right on over the Lord says, and I don't do that anyway. Right? You just be nice about it. Listen, um, I know you don't know me, but I feel like I need to share something with you if that's okay. Kindness. Right? Because if they're looking for a word, they want it. You ain't got to worry about it. They want it. But it's your approach. You come up in there like, I'm prophet so-and-so. So They don't care nothing about you being no prophet. And guess what? Don't nobody else care either. No, you don't need all that foolishness. You just go over me kind of say, listen, um, I feel like I need to share something with you. Is that okay? Is it all right if I share this with you? Share it with them. And then you ask them, does that bear witness with you? Is that, does that make sense? Because by the time you finish, they're going to be weeping. Because you just hit them in a, in a place. And they're looking at you like, how in the world you know this about me? I don't know you. So their spirit is going to bear witness with what you just said. And then you say, is, is that, that bears witness with you? you? They say, yes. Okay, well, God bless you. May the Lord use you. And then walk off. Don't be up there. Yeah, I go to this church. And I, 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 hush, hush. Just hush. 
Your, your assignment was to give the word. That was it. And then you walk off. Let God do the rest and he'll bring the increase. Is that all right? But if you don't have a discerning spirit, then your flesh kicks in and then, then it's going to be all about you. Yeah, because I was praying last night and I prayed for two hours, 45 minutes and two seconds. And the Lord gave me your name. Hush up with all that foolishness. That wasn't because of that. All that praying you did was for you. It wasn't even for the other person. Amen. Is, is that all right? You shall receive power. That's what I want was the power of God. When I repented of my jealousy and I asked God to fill me. I didn't feel anything right away. I said, well, it just didn't take. Right, Kawana, Kawana, I lay hands on Kawana the first time. Kawana said, Pastor, I don't believe it took. I said, it took. I said, because we have faith in it. I said, but now you just have to exercise your faith, right, Kawana? I didn't feel anything. I didn't, I didn't feel spiritual at all. <laughs> I just went on about my business. It was about a week later. I was in prayer, and I was just praying and praying and praying. I heard something in my belly, and I'm like, ooh. Um, and, and I stopped praying because I really hadn't had any teaching on this, right? So I'm like, I definitely don't want to do anything that's not God, right? That's what stopped me. I was like, mm -mm, that ain't something. Ain't, mm -mm, oh, Lord. I, oh, no, that ain't God. Something's wrong. I, I stopped praying. I went in the living room cut the TV on. And the Lord said, go back to prayer. He said, didn't you ask for this? I went back to praying, and I heard this beautiful language. I didn't understand it. He says, it's not for you to understand. He said, I understand it. Amen. Amen. So I just let it go. And man, this sound came out of my mouth. And I'm like, whoa, that's powerful stuff. Amen. So then I had to dig deeper in the word of God to figure out what I got. I'm like, I got it, but what is this? And what do I do with it? So that's, that's what I came in here to tell you is there is a deeper level of what God wants to give you. You got the spirit, but what dimension? Let me tell you something. When I started praying on that level, man, I can't even tell you the amount of revelation God gave me on his word. Amen. It would just come to me. My wife will tell you, I, was, I came off of the streets. I didn't go to Bible class. I didn't go to theological seminary school. I came off of the streets. But God, Calvary makes the difference. And so she'll tell you, man, God would just drop nuggets. I would be studying. I'm like, God, this is just too heavy for me. And the more I just prayed in the spirit and prayed in the natural, come on, you do both. Yeah. Right? Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, I pray in the spirit and I pray with an understanding, which means you can do both. If you only want to pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. If you only want to pray in whatever your natural language is, then you pray in that. It doesn't make you less than anybody else. You pray how the Holy Ghost wants you to pray. If you got the spirit, use it is what God is saying on that level. If you don't, pray with power in English. What he's saying is that I want you to be some lukewarm prayer person. Regardless if you're praying in Spanish or English or in the spirit. Is this making sense? So don't think that you're going to get this to be a better Christian. This isn't going to make you a better Christian. You have to watch it because sometimes it can make you ostracize yourself from other Christians because then you think you all that in a bag of chips. You ain't, you ain't all that. You're not. All this is is you have gotten the word of the Lord. You receive it in your spirit and you say, you know what? I want another dimension of that stuff because it's the promise from the Father. That's all this is, saints. Listen, I wouldn't give you a scorpion. I wouldn't give you a stone. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't give you a rock. As a father, I wouldn't give you anything like that. I wouldn't teach you like this to give you something that's going to hurt you. First of all, it's not about you. I wouldn't do anything to hurt them. We are here to be an encouragement to them. I wouldn't teach anything to hurt you. Amen. I would dare, oh my God, I get me. Amen. If I came up in here with my own agenda. Yeah. I got one agenda. Uh -huh. That's the agenda of God. And he wants you to know he has more for you. Amen. 
Amen. That's all. Before I pray, let me give you just this one last thing. There's a difference between a well and a river. There's a difference between a well and a river. Amen. In John chapter four, we don't have to turn there, but the Bible says, Jesus says there is a well that will spring up to everlasting life. See, to me, that's the salvation. It's springing up to everlasting life. It's a well. It is the spirit, but it's on a certain dimension. Are you here with me? If you don't watch it, if you continuously stay as a well Christian, you will begin to talk your way out of stuff because you say, well, that's for everybody else, but it ain't for me. <laughs> Pastor, I hear you, but well, I don't know if I want to go there yet. Pastor, I know we should be out there preaching the word, but well, I don't know if that's for me, Pastor. See, when you become, if you stay a well Christian, one thing about a well, it can become stagnant. And you don't want your well to become a swamp. So Jesus talked about a river. And the river, see, the well is in John 4, 7. The river is in John 7, 37. He says, there is a river that will spring up out of your belly. So he didn't mention everlasting life here. Why? Because you should already have life. You already got the spirit at this moment. So now what he wants to do is to turn your well into a river. Is that making sense? Because the river is flowing. It's fresh water. It's clean water. It's pure water. He said, that's how I want my folks to flow. I want to take them from being a well Christian to a river Christian. Again, you already got the spirit, but what dimension? Is this making sense? Okay, here are the byproducts. The byproducts of being filled with the Spirit. Because some people don't know what it is. In Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it was tongues of fire. Right? I believe tongues of fire can be translated in, in a couple of ways. You can pray in English on fire. Yes. You don't have to pray with a heavenly language on fire. You can pray in English or Spanish or Portuguese, whatever your language is. But there's also a tongue of fire where you are praying a beautiful, melodious, heavenly language. It is. It's a beautiful thing. And listen, when people say, well, it's Babel. Well, there are over 6,000 different languages. Amen. Well, unless you know all 6,000, how do you know that what I'm speaking is not a language? I'm just saying. If you're that smart and you know 6,000 languages, <laughs> then you are God. <laughs> Amen. Because it is a language. When those men in Galilee heard them after the day of Pentecost, he said, you men of Galilee, how in the world are you speaking my language? It wasn't Babel, but guess what? Listen to the rest of it. He said, we hear you speaking of the wonderful things of God. Amen. It wasn't Babel. They were speaking a beautiful language. That's why I know it's all of ours. Some of them spoke the word with boldness over in Acts chapter 4, verse 31. I'm giving you these scriptures so you can go back and read them. Because some of you, you still, you still on the fence about this. And that's okay, I don't care. Because if you go back and read this in your house, and you say, Lord, okay, this is mine. I want it. Baptize me afresh. And you just receive it by faith. Guess what? It may not happen right then and there, but boy, one day you're going to be in the car driving to work. And you're going to be praising God. All of a sudden, your bottom lip going to lose control. You're going to be, 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 hey! Watch what I say. It happens just that quickly and suddenly. Amen? So they spoke the word with boldness. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. The Bible says they had spiritual power. I'm just giving you the byproduct. The first one was tongues of fire. The second one, they spoke the word with boldness. Boldness. They were not in fear. The third one in Acts 10, 38, spiritual power. In Acts 10, 46, Acts 10, 46, they spoke in other tongues and they had magnification of God. Amen. These are the byproducts, thanks of God. Acts chapter 13, verse 52, the Bible said they were filled with joy and the Holy Ghost. Don't you know that's part of the kingdom? Because the kingdom of God is not with food or drink. The kingdom of God is what? Come on. It's joy. It's joy. 
been filled with the Spirit gives you joy. Amen. You should be happy Christians, full of joy. Amen. Amen. We should be walking around our face all toe up. <laughs> or, or acting acting uh, real super, super Christian. And you got to look, you look mean because I'm a super Christian. <laughs> Don't mess with me now. I'm not trying to get in touch with God. That's just foolishness. No, you should be full of joy. Every pastor should be approachable. If you're not approachable, get out because you, you're fooling yourself. Jesus was approachable. And since we're not Jesus, I think we should be approachable too. He said, suffer the little children coming to me and forbid them not. He said, for there is the kingdom of God. Children love to be around Jesus. Do children love to be around you? Mm -hmm. Children know joy when they see it. Amen. Children have great discernment. That's why I watch babies around people. If a baby don't like being around a person, there's something wrong with that person. I'm like, move that baby. Get that baby. Get that baby. Move that baby. There's something, something going on over there. Let's pray. Let's lay hands. <laughs> we got to cast something out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me give you Luke 1 and 6. Luke 1 and 6 says, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they prophesied. How many of you in this room have ever prophesied to another person? Gave them a word of the Lord. Something you heard in your spirit. Listen, don't get spooky with it. Just say you prophesied. You, you heard the word and you just gave it to them. There's nothing to be spooky about. You, you heard it and you gave it to them. Didn't that feel good? That's a good thing. Listen, all of us should be prophesying to people. All of us. Every Christian should be prophesying to people. It's not for the pastors and those who call themselves prophets. <laughs> Apostle Paul said we should all prophesy. All of us. All of us are hearing from the Lord. So we should be giving people what you're hearing from the Lord. See, sometimes you might not even know it was a word from the Lord to a person. You're just talking to them. You've been on the phone with them. And then stuff just starts bubbling up out of you. It starts, it's come out of nowhere. You're like, well, did you think about this? How about that? How about that? How about that? That's God giving you that. You didn't think about that before. So you're giving him a word of knowledge. It's something that you didn't have before. God downloads it to you. All of you have done that. You may not have thought about it, but you all have prophesied. Again, don't make it spooky. I don't like spooky Christians. They, they scare me. I don't like spookiness, right? I, I, I like to keep the main thing. And the main thing about this is Jesus has more for us that he wants all of us to operate in, saints. Now, listen, I know this for a fact. You can't receive past your level of faith. This is why I just read so many. I had so many other scriptures for you, but I just wanted to read enough in your hearing because faith comes by faith comes by and hearing the word of god i just gave you the word i wanted you to see it in the bible so that you know i didn't add any biases to this john lawton was added to none of this this is in the bible it's not a new revelation it's been there the whole time they didn't like it they inserted it yesterday it's been there the whole time but sometimes it takes somebody who is who has operated in it to tell you more about it. Amen. Again, I would never give you a stone or a rock or a scorpion. Amen. But what I do want to pass on to you is a spiritual gift. Amen. Amen. 